Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. How many of you would like to do something that could change the world for the better? How many of you would like to make a contribution that would last for years to come? And in doing so, you could change tomorrow and touch the future and have a legacy. How many of you would like to do something that could give yourself what is perhaps the greatest feeling of pride, satisfaction, and fulfillment that you may ever know? Of course you would. You can change the world in the future by helping a child reach his or her full potential. You can change the world, one child at a time. My first experience with childhood education came when I was in college. I was an engineering student at Columbia University in New York, and I volunteered for a tutoring program for the neighborhood children of Harlem. I found this program to be very satisfying and rewarding. The children really seemed to appreciate our help, and we truly felt that we were changing the world one child at a time. My next experience with childhood education came when I moved here to Baltimore in 1990. That experience did not go as well. I volunteered for a program called the Doctor-Lawyer-Teacher Partnership Against Drug Abuse. In this program, they sent teams of doctors and lawyers to the neighborhood middle, middle schools, and it was our goal to speak to the children about the medical and legal problems that they could get into with drug abuse. Seemed like a great idea. After I went to a few of the schools, I realized quickly that they knew a lot more about the legal problems than the medical problems. I also immediately was shocked and appalled by the condition of the Baltimore City Schools. I went to one school that was so overcrowded that they partitioned the gym into 10 separate classrooms. And each classroom was only separated by short walls that didn't reach the ceiling. You could hear the chatter in each of the rooms throughout the entire gym. I couldn't imagine how the children could concentrate with all that background noise. In another school I went to, it was also very overcrowded. They had 50 to 60 children in each class and only one teacher in each class. How could one teacher effectively educate so many kids at the same time? In another school I went to, the children didn't have any school books. The teachers were handing out Xerox copies of chapters from the books. In the worst school I went to, and I won't mention the name of it, the children were completely running amok. They were running up and down the halls. They were fighting. In the classroom that I went to, the children were yelling. They were fighting. I tried to begin my speech, and I looked to the teacher to try to restore some order there. And to my astonishment, the teacher walked out of the room and left me there alone. I became so discouraged about the Baltimore City Schools that I quit the Doctor Lawyer program. I concluded that the Baltimore City Schools were so fatally flawed that these kids were doomed. My dream of helping every child change the world one child at a time was shattered. Then one day, I was walking around the hospital and I was approached by one of the pharmaceutical saleswomen who had heard I was doing this work, doing presentations in schools, and she asked me if I would like to give a presentation in the school that she did volunteer work for. She described the school to me as a tuition-free Catholic school that accepted children of all faiths and nationalities and did a fantastic job in educating their students. And I told her, I said, look, you know, I just <coughs> did this experience with the Baltimore City Schools. It really didn't work out that well, and I really don't feel like doing this anymore. But she said, oh no, Dr. Dubin, this school is different. You would really enjoy speaking at this school. And I said, that may be true, but I really don't have time to do this anymore. So I thought that was that. 
And then I ran into her a few days later, and she started talking to me about the school again. I said, oh, look, you know, this sounds really good, but I'll have to take a pass. I really don't have time now. I ran into her a third time. And guess what? She's talking about the school. And I said, look, lady, I told you I'm not interested, okay? Leave me alone. I run into her a fourth time. This time, she sneaks up behind me, jumps me, put a gun to my head, and drags me down there. Not really, but she was pestering me so much that I would have done anything to get her off my back. So I go, I go down to the school. The name of the school is Mother Seton Academy. And in their mission statement, they describe themselves as a tuition-free middle school for young men and women that educates in a multicultural environment those with the greatest economic need. Promoting digni dignity and respect for each person, Mother Seton Academy challenges its students to realize their God-given talents and become leaders who serve their families, communities, and society. I get to the school and they escort me to one of the auditoriums and right away I notice something very unusual. The children are quiet and well behaved. I'm thinking to myself, what, what's going on here? Did they give these kids sedatives or something? Why are they so quiet? So I go into the room and I begin my speech about the dangers of drug abuse and the children are very attentive, they ask very insightful questions. And it's, it was just a fantastic experience. I leave there feeling a sense of accomplishment. I feel like I've really done something good. About a week later, after this delightful gourmet meal, I received an exquisite dessert. I got an envelope in the mail and in, from the school, and inside this envelope is a stack of individual thank you letters written by each of the students who attended my speech. Let me read you a sample excerpt of one of these letters. Dear Dr. Dubin, that's me, I just want to thank you for all you did to help us learn about the dangers of drug abuse. You showed us how drugs can cause an infection in the heart. That is a very bad thing. That's why I'll never do drugs when I get older. You made me happy to know that someone like you would want to work with people to keep them alive. I like how you take pride in your job. You inspire me to want to become a doctor. These letters made me realize that there was something special going on in the school. It also made me realize why this saleswoman was having me come down there kicking and screaming. Ever since that day, I've been hooked on this school. They entrap me in their spiderweb. Very clever of them. Over the years, I've given multiple lectures at the school. I've invited the students up to my hospital for field trips. And about 10 years ago, they invited me to be on the board of directors. The school has been very successful. We routinely have our, grad our graduates get full scholarships to the local Catholic schools. We have many graduates who have gone on to college, and we have one graduate who recently graduated from law school and passed the bar. My experiences at Mother Seton Academy have been some of the most rewarding activities in my life. How about you? How would you like to make a meaningful difference in a child's life? How would you like to give young dreams wings so they can fly? You can help a child reach his full potential by being a teacher, a mentor, a role model, or a benefactor. If you don't have any time, there are plenty of worthy children's charities that can make good use of your money. I know mine can. You can help change a child's destiny from a life of poverty, crime, and despair to a life of achievement, prosperity, and success. And when you do, when you do, you will gain the indescribable feeling of pride, satisfaction, and fulfillment as I have from knowing that there 
future achievements will someday change the world for the future. You will never stand so tall as when you help somebody small. You can change the world, one child at a time. Mr. Toastmaster.